Yeah, thanks for putting me after Eric, because I'm going to tell you why I think it's a good idea to spend the next five to ten years of your life after college staying on in school, making no money, uh, <laughs> and uh, basically being a slave to a tyrannical advisor. <laughs> so, well, I don't know. I just never could escape school. I, uh, but, but. Okay. So. They go to Southern accent now. Yes. Yeah, so this is what I'm told. This is what I'm told. And I don't hear it, but then again, you know, if you come down and you talk to the people I talk to, you wouldn't think I have a Southern accent. <laughs> In, in the academic world, boy, it's really not much different than what it takes to succeed in business or uh, as, as a, uh, someone in the uh, you know, corporate imperialistic uh, <laughs> 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 What it boils down to are the things that you get out of the union education, right? Including the ability to learn throughout your entire life. And that really is the most important thing. You know, as a college educator, that's what I try to instill in the students that uh, you know, come to my classes and uh, that I advise. Willingness to learn, flexibility, talk a little bit more about what it's like to move from the Midwest to the South. Um, uh, patience, tolerance, and that last one right there, uh, collegiality, playing well with others. <laughs> That's really one of the most important things. And I, I throw this slide up here. This is one of the slides that we use when we go to the state legislature in Montgomery and ask them to give us a lot of the taxpayers' money so that we can spend it on research, right? And uh, one of the things that they want to know, one of the first things they want to know is, do you have an interdisciplinary group set up? Do you have a bunch of collaborators? Do you play well with others? Okay. And so we make this group that shows all the people that work in my area, which happens to be turf grass management, and uh, across the different departments at Auburn, and we put 12 names on the, on the slides, and they say, yeah, you know. It's not just me going there and saying, give me $500,000, right? Okay, it's this group. Okay, so, yes, I did. <laughs> and it's not so bad. I mean, they give us they give the faculty houses on the top left there. I get my own laptop that's a redneck portable computer. <laughs> and uh, the state vehicle that I drive. <laughs> is on the right there, and three words there are research, instruction, and extension. And that's your basic mission of any, any large land-grant university like U of I, uh, Auburn's exactly the same in its mission as that. Um, there's a lot of different paths that you can take within the academic world. Um, what you probably think of right off the bat, right, is the scientist looking through a microscope, right, or maybe the, uh, uh, you know, learned professor sitting in his armchair smoking his pipe, dispensing wisdom. But the, uh, the truth is you can do a lot of different things. And actually, what I do more than anything else is that third uh, uh, word there, extension, which is probably the least uh, appreciated of the uh, Miami Grant University's missions, but it's taking the knowledge that's generated uh, through research and bringing it out to the people in general. Okay, and so I do classroom instruction, you know, your typical teaching of uh, college students in class, which is actually very similar to a uni class. You guys basically go through college twice. Uh, just think of what you'll find. Uh, by the time you've gone through four years of college, you'll think, man, this is exactly like uni high. Uh, and it's a good college. Uh, a bad college, you'll think, why did I go come here? <laughs> but anyways, uh, extension, uh, Research, you can do anything you want. And since I work so much in extension, I thought I'd just share some of the uh, extension pictures that I use in various talks. And one of the neat things is I do get to uh, you know, do some things that uh, take me to other countries. For example, this is uh, uh, in Manchester, UK. This is uh, Manchester City Stadium. And uh, what they're doing there is trying to grow grass where. Um, the uh, days are short, even in the summertime, and the stadium has a roof on it, which means that the field gets even less light than it would if it didn't have a roof on it. 
And even in the middle of the summertime, took this picture in July of 05, even in the middle of the summertime, they used these grow lights on a field in the home <laughs> area in order to keep the grass growing fast enough that it'll take a pounding of playing uh, preseason and premiership games and also having concerts on that pitch and other things like that. Um, <laughs> okay, so those people who were out with me last night and heard me tell the story. Uh, this is one of the weirdest things that's happened to me recently. And I'll tell you this, just to uh, give you an idea of some of the things that you might run across. Uh, I got this um, piece of rotting chicken in the mail the other day. <laughs> this came on Friday of last week. So one, no, it came on Monday of this week. It was sent Friday, which meant that it sat out in 100 degree heat. Uh, in uh, the process of being shipped and uh, wasn't on ice. But anyhow, the guy uh, who sent it to me, our uh, food processing company, and they packaged frozen chicken breast. And they sent a shipment of frozen chicken breast from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, up to someplace in Kentucky. And when it got there, there was this brass in the chicken. Now, how in the world does brass get into frozen chicken breast? I don't know. How do I get involved in this? They looked me up. Uh, I guess on Auburn's webpage, and said, well, we want to know what kind of grass this is. What species of grass is this? <laughs> <laughs> and I know what they're thinking, and, and that's what the thought process is. Well, if, 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 it, if it comes to be that this grass is something that doesn't grow in Alabama and only grows in Kentucky, then they're off the website. Right? Um, but, unfortunately, it's just, there just wasn't enough there, and it was too loud. <laughs> <laughs> the secretaries uh, spent all last week razzing me about that because the mail came into the main office of the department. It's smelling like <laughs> But the, uh, the other part of my job, and this part of the job, this is the part of the job I probably like the most, is when I go out into the state of Alabama and um, get to do uh, horticultural uh, education for um, master gardeners which is a program for just anybody, the general public, to uh, pick up uh, uh, horticultural knowledge and uh, help to establish um, these uh, centers throughout the state. And this one happens to be in a little town in the northeastern part of Alabama called Gadsden. And what we basically did was we took a piece of unused land and the extension guys up there uh, decided, hey, we'll make this into a nice little demonstration garden where we'll have all sorts of different ornamental plants including a bunch of different species of grass uh, that uh, people in the surrounding area can come and look at, uh, help them make decisions when they're uh, doing landscaping, see what things look like, what goes well with others. And uh, this was all funded uh, with local money um, from that county there. And I try to support them in terms of finding them, planting materials for the grasses that they can use and uh, you know, helping them set, set up the grass plots. But, uh, this is uh, the kind of thing that you can do in academia that uh, you can do uh, in other uh, walks of life, but in most walks of life, this isn't part of your job, it's something extra that you do. So I think that's kind of cool that I can do this kind of work and, and still get paid for it. <laughs> okay, and, and then, you know, just don't be afraid to get down on your hands and knees and poke around in the dirt uh, when you have to. <laughs> uh, and that's. That's the bottom part, you know. If the grass is dying on some of the baseball field, which is what's going there, sometimes you've got to do some digging to figure out what's going on. And that's that's true in any uh, aspect of life. Don't be, don't be afraid to get down on your hands and knees uh, and get dirty. And finally, uh, they mandate that I put this slide in any time I go and talk uh, about the economy. Most people don't uh, you know, realize the importance of agriculture and uh, the uh, importance of uh, making sure that we continue to fund our uh, crop and so But yes, there are only five people that have won all three of these prizes, the Nobel Prize, Presidential Medal, Presidential Medal of Freedom, and the Congressional Gold Medal. And uh, Norman Borlaug was uh, a man probably most responsible for the Green Revolution and the radical increase in crop yields, which basically uh, has made it possible for the planet to support six plus billion people right now. Uh, if it weren't for that, uh, we'd have much more starvation than we have now. So I will leave you uh, with that and uh, also plant one more seed in you, which is if any of you want to come to Auburn 
you know, for graduate school or even for undergraduate, uh, things can 